It's great to be back. We are continuing on with our Back to Business series. So this is part two, as Rebecca mentioned. So on today's webinar, we will talk more specifically about restaurants and hospitality and how they're going to be reopening from the pandemic. We'll also explain the best practices as it relates to security to help those that are opening restaurants and hotels maintain efficiency. I will also give you a sneak peek of the new mask detector camera. And Damon is going to take us into a deeper dive on Dawa's new temperature terminal station. So without further ado, let's get started because we have a lot to cover today. So now, as you know, with most states across the nation relaxing ordered businesses to close, and now that more people are starting to venture outside the stay-at-home orders, businesses are not only trying to figure out how to reopen, but also how to stay open in the event of a second wave. Unfortunately, though, as people start heading back to work, according to OSHA, most American workers will likely experience a low to medium exposure risk at their place of employment. So it's very essential for businesses to consider and follow CDC guidelines. Now in all uh, 43 states, they, they've actually started to allow restaurants to reopen. So there's still a few out there that are, are not reopening in for restaurants yet, but in 43 states, um, they are starting to reopen for dine-in services of some type. Now, however, varying degrees of social distancing is gonna remain in place for those that are starting to reopen. So for example, Restaurants may be setting tables six feet apart and following guidelines that they're going to be capping dining room capacities between 25 and 50 percent. Now, bars, on the other hand, they are set to reopen in, in later phases. And um, so they're, they're just starting to, to consider that. So um, now the effects of COVID-19 have been inconceivable for restaurants because they've had to, to close for so long. However, as I mentioned, the good news is that most states are in various stages of starting to finally reopen. Therefore, in preparing a plan to reopen, restaurants should be striving to reduce transmission among employees, trying to maintain healthy business operations, and also maintain a healthy work environment for their employees and customers. However, this is a little easier said than done. Now, thermal technology is one approach that is helping businesses keep customers and employees safe. And thermal technology, as you know, I'm sure, is not anything new. However, it was used during the outbreak of SARS several years ago as a way to detect fevers. And in fact, because fevers are associated with illness and the fact that outbreaks have been occurring every couple of years, Having a temperature monitoring solution is in place is really a fantastic proactive approach for the future and in the event that we would get a second wave that you'll be better prepared. Now, this type of technology provides an automatic, non-contact, non-invasive way to monitor temperature. So exposure is limited to any type of security personnel. It's gonna be faster than using a handheld thermometer for higher efficiency. Now, of course, there are a number of other things businesses can do to reduce the risk of infection. 
such as installing a plexiglass at the hostess's podium or placing decals on the floor so social distancing is followed or tables are all set you know six feet apart also requiring employees and customers to wear masks and installing touchless hand sanitizer devices another one is offering frequent breaks for employees to wash their hands and also to mandate more cleaning and finally screening customers and employees for an elevated temperature but ensuring that these that people follow these rules can be very challenging and this is where dawa can really help now with our solutions we can automate automate requirements so that you and your staff can concentrate on getting back to business versus trolling customers for their temperature and reminding them to wear their masks, telling them when they can and can't enter the store due to capacity restrictions. And in fact, putting employees in this position can often create a lot of tension with customers and can also put them on the defensive if somebody's coming up to them and saying, hey, you need to wear a mask um, or you can't enter the store. There's already too many people in there. So customers aren't used to that. And so they do tend to, to kind of get on the defensive side. However, if there's an automated voice that's alerting you to something, it's faceless, so your guard is, is dropped a little bit more and it kind of keeps your employees on the neutral side and not having to be the bad guy to go around and, and trolling people. So those are, that's a, a great benefit with our automated um, system. So, for DAWA, we offer four types of solutions that are helping to reopen and provide higher efficiency when it comes to opening up a restaurant or any type of hospitality type business. Now, the first one is our thermal temperature monitoring solution. And this is gonna be the, the most expensive of the, the four different types that we have in our line. And this one is more ideal for very large businesses uh, that have a constant flow of people coming through. Now, the second one in our line is our new five megapixel mask detector camera. And I'll talk about this more in just a few minutes, but this really is great for identifying customers and employees who are not wearing a mask and what it does is it automatically sends an announcement through an external speaker that they need to to put their mask on the third one is our flow control solution and what this does is counts people to control the capacity versus somebody having to actually stand at the the front door and the exit door uh, communicating with one another and having to do manual counting. And then the final one is our thermal temperature station. And this one's ideal for probably smaller businesses, such as maybe um, an employee entrance. Uh, and so this works really well for, you know, taking employees temperatures prior to them coming into the, the building um and potentially exposing other people so those are the four that we have in our line and we'll be talking about each one of these in a little bit more detail so the first one i'm going to talk about is the thermal temperature monitoring solution now this solution consists of a hybrid two megapixel visible lens camera and then it also has a thermal imager uh, it also will consist of having a black body device. That's this here on the right hand side. That's the, the visual of what that looks like. And what that does is it provides a constant calibration source to make sure that you have an accurate temperature monitoring situation. And this, this solution should only be used in indoor applications. 
So without that calibration device, you're going to get more false readings because you're, and then you're going to potentially allow someone to enter who has a fever, or you could be getting elevated temperatures when the people actually don't have an elevated temperature, and then you're going to spend time, you know, having somebody as a second source taking manual temperatures. And then the final piece for this solution is the 16-channel NVR, and with that, um, that has face detection so that you can identify the person that has the temperature that's coming through uh, so that you can monitor them and, and take them off and to a, a secondary um, location. So both of these um, devices, the camera and the NVR, they do have that EPOE technology. So if you're not familiar with that, that allows you to uh, change a coax infrastructure into pure IP. It also allows you to extend the transmission distance to go much longer distance than a standard IP camera. So the accuracy is very high with the black body, up to 5, 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can get live alerts um, via the mobile app. Um, so you can get a recording of the temperatures and that exceed the, the limit defined by the operator. This solution allows you to monitor multiple people at distances up to 23 feet and allows you to monitor around up, up to 30 people Per second. So it's going to be much faster than using a handheld device and the potential of cross contamination uh, from that handheld device and the, the person that's actually doing the operating of the device. So this is going to be much, much safer, more sanitary, more efficient. So if we compare this solution, to manual recordings, if um, a fever is detected, a um, you're going to be able to get an, an alert. And in this particular um, image on your screen, you're seeing that people are going through the line and there's somebody there manually taking all of the temperatures. So if you were to do this, it takes about three seconds per person in order to measure each person's temperature. And so let's just say you had around 5,000 people that were coming through an area throughout the, the day. Uh, it would take about 4.2 hours to get them all through using a handheld device. Now with Dawa's monitoring solution, efficiency is increased dramatically as it can um, measure people um, much faster. As I mentioned, it can measure simultaneously multiple people, people per second. So you're going to get a higher efficiency and a constant flow of traffic. So it's just going to, to go much quicker. Now, once it finds somebody that has an elevated temperature and you can just, you can specify what temperature you want it to alert you to, um, and once it finds somebody, it will send an instant alert that, that of the person's face so that you can call them out and take them to a secondary location. So what we recommend if they are taken to a secondary location to confirm that the person does have uh, an elevated temperature, um, we recommend using a clinical grade thermometer. Um, but the other thing, too, is to understand that human bodies can actually register different temperatures just depending on the method. Uh, for example, we take for granted that 98.6 is a normal temperature, but really this is the average when using a calibrated oral thermometer. Now, the CDC guidelines say that um, they state that the minimum temperature that indicates a fever is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, um, according to the CDC. Um, so let's just say that you're using a rectal or an ear method. You're actually notice that the temperature will be 
0.5 to 1 degree Fahrenheit higher than an oral temperature. And then if you use the armpit or a forehead method, the temperature will actually be 0.5 to 1 degree lower than using an oral temperature method. So these are just some things to keep in mind. Again, if you are using a secondary method to confirm if somebody does have a fever or not that you want to take into consideration uh, when you're, you're pulling that person up. Aside, The other thing that you want to keep in mind, too, is whether they just came in outside from the elements, because if they, your body has not had an, an opportunity to adjust properly, they could have an elevated temperature as well, um, or even a lower temperature if they're coming in from the cold. So these are some things that you, that you should keep in mind as well. Um, the best thing is, is to allow somebody's body to tend to um, settle down, um, return to normal for, you know, anywhere between one to five minutes after they've come in from outside. And you can kind of do this by using a stanchion, um, having them wait in line. Now, the probably the most accurate way of measuring a person's internal body temperature with a thermal camera is by measuring the inner campus and this is part of the eye that includes the tear duct. Now, although, like I said, Dallas Solution is capable of measuring multiple people at a time, if you want the most accurate reading, it's really best for pre people to walk through a stanchion in a single file line to remove any type of head or eye accessory so the camera can read from the eye area that's where you're going to get the most accurate internal body temperature. Now, again, don't forget, they should um, walk through that stanchion um, and allow their body temperature to return to normal. Again, if they've come in from the heat, which could cause a false elevated reading. So you want to keep that in mind as well. So here is actually a couple of examples of where the person's eyes are not exposed so that the thermal device is not going to be able to get an accurate internal body temperature from the inner canthus. So the four pictures at the top, the, the temperature reading is based on the person's skin temperature um, because it's not able, the, the camera is not able to see the eye area. So in this example, you know, the hat, the glasses are covering it, the hat again, the brim isn't allowing the camera to, to get into the eye area. And this one, last one, you know, the helmet and the glasses. Um, so what it's reading is just the, the person's body temperature. But if you really want to get an accurate reading, it's best to have them take off that hat, push back the hair, um, take the glasses off, have them go through a stanchion, allow the body temperature to cool down, and um, uh, walk single file line. That's, that's the best that you can do to, to get the best readings. So here's just a, an overview of your best practices on how to set up the devices. So you can either mount these to the wall, um, down from a ceiling mount, we have accessories, or you can use tripods. So for example, um, what you want is the devices facing each other, um, and the, the camera should always be about 0.65 to 1.6 feet higher than the black body. And um, using the, the height recommendations here, it gives you a little bit of variation to, to play with it. Um, you want to set them up about 9.8 feet apart. And the, the visible lens on the camera, as I mentioned, it is 2 megapixel and it has an 8 millimeter lens. And then the thermal lens on this camera is a 13 millimeter. So it's important to follow, again, any guidelines that, that the manual has for setting up these devices. You don't want to set it up in an outdoor environment. Um, make sure not to set it up in direct sunlight. Uh, anywhere that has um, air, strong airflow that could alter uh, the black body, um, the calibration of that, you want to avoid any type of high ambient temperature reflective surfaces. 
And then this here is just showing how, you know, to, to deploy a stanchion, have them walk through, their bodies are able to cool and return to, to normal, depending if they come in from outside and then go through um, and removing any accessories. So here's actually a, um, a customer site and um, they actually had that, that same issue where they were having um, people, employees come through the stanchion and their bodies um, were very high. They were getting high temperature readings and that's because they were coming in from the desert heat. So that was a pain point for them and they couldn't understand why they were getting so many false readings. So they went ahead and deployed a stanchion and um, their bodies then were able to readjust from walking from outside to inside. And they reported back to us that it was taking anywhere between one to five minutes. So here is an overview of everything that you would need for that full body solution, um, the, the monitoring. So you have your black body here, which is essential um, for you know, making sure that you have that high accuracy. There's your camera, uh, your storage device. You do need to use this, this one. Um, this is the only one that we recommend at this time in our line. Uh, there's your, your display monitor if you need a switch. And here is our devices where you can mount. Again, if you're gonna do a tripod, you do need this mounting plate, or if you're gonna attach it to a wall or ceiling, um, this one just came in and we're still waiting on the ceiling one. It should be here um, within the next week or two. Okay, so the next one that I have is this five megapixel mask detection with an active alarm. So this is another way to help um, restaurants or hotels help to, to reopen and have more efficiency because if you have a camera like this, maybe just inside the doorway, it has an octave alarm message if a person isn't wearing their mask. So, you know, um, this is very new for a lot of people and it's very easy to even forget that, to, that you have to wear a mask. Um, sometimes, you know, even I go in from the, I get out of the car, I go right in the store and then I have to turn around and go back because I forgot my mask. Um, so it's great to have a camera there to just alert people. Again, it keeps the employee out of the conversation um, and kind of brings the, the, you know, having customers be defensive about being told to wear, to wear a mask or they can't come in the store. Um, it's, you know, it's faceless and it's just automated. So this, this camera, obviously it can do security. So if you need to upgrade, this is the camera to upgrade to or change out, you know, current or existing cameras. It's five megapixel. You're getting that active alarm for mass detection. Plus it does all these other great things. It has the Arctic Pro technology. So indoor, outdoor rated for even very cold environments. It does um, 20 frames per second at five megapixel. It's a 2.8 millimeter lens, and it does have starlight technology, true wide dynamic range. It has IR up to 98 feet. It has an intelligent video system analytics, has a dual smart Kodak, uh, is IK10 rated, and an SD card slot on there. So here's a video of how it works. Okay. Um, and then here's one more. So this one's just showing that in a crowd of people, it can detect one person. So that was just a, an overview of how the camera works. Um, you can have it set for an alarm to go off. Um, and my understanding, 
this camera's not launched yet, or it should be launching by the end of the month. So um, my understanding is that it will have the ability to send a message um, such as, you know, please wear, your, wear a mask, um, something along those lines. Okay, so here's just a, a quick overview of, you know, of a bar or restaurant for reopening. So again, as I mentioned before, um, six feet apart for tables. That's one of the things that's being recommended um, by CDC. But also, um, you know, if you already have your cameras in place for, you know, a bar or restaurant, um, it's very easy to integrate all of these new devices into something that's already up and, and existing. So for flow control, you would get um, one of these four megapixel cameras. We have it either in a bullet style or a dome style, and it's the N45D series. And this would be ideal for, you know, right inside the entrance, so that it can count people, um, determining um, how many are in and when the next person can go in. So Damon will talk about that in, in a little bit more detail, um, how it exactly works. And then the, the high-end solution um, to monitor for temperature, that would be best deployed again inside, um, right inside the, the door and obviously off to an area where it's um, not going to be uh, getting any type of, of breezy air that's going to affect the device is um, efficiency and, and accuracy. And then we have the mask detection camera. This one you could um, deploy right inside the entrance or you could also deploy it throughout the facility as well. Um, you know, because once you get in, sometimes it's easy to take it off. Obviously, people will be taking it off if they're eating, but, um, you know, if there's hallways or other gathering facilities within a restaurant, you may want to place these um, throughout the, the restaurant or, or any other area on the grounds. And then the temperature station, um, maybe to deploy something like that at your employee entrance. And that's just to ensure that if anybody does run a fever or is sick, um, that they don't enter, you know, they can't get into the building and, uh, um, if they have an elevated temperature. And Damon will talk more about that one in, in detail in just a moment. So for hotels, again, you may already have some of these devices in place, a security system. You may have, um, you know, a multi-sensor that's detecting your perimeter, your outside area for wide area surveillance, meeting rooms. Maybe you have a fisheye, the dual lens for hallways. Uh, so very easily you can integrate, again, the, the temperature monitoring solution just inside the, the hotel, maybe the lobby area. Uh, the employee entrance or back entrance area, uh, loading dock, that type of thing would be the station. And then the, the five megapixel mass detecting camera anywhere throughout the hotel facility. And then your flow control, just counting people. Maybe you want to do that over around the pool area uh, because of opening up to, you know, 25 to 50% to of capacity. Um, that would be a, a good area for that. All right, so as Jennifer mentioned earlier, um, we do have that full body solution with a black body box. Um, here is just showing you a diagram of how it can be incorporated with the NVR or our DSS um, VMS. So it, it can work with either DSS Pro or DSS Express. Um, <clears throat> so with this, you will see on the local, on the MVR, you'll see a local display of the um, thermal captures in the person's face, and you'll get a high temperature notification on the MVR or the um, DSS client. And it also works with their our mobile app, their uh, new DMSS um, app. So you'll get those notifications um, on those. So this is our kind of like our topology for the full solution of a black body um, camera, a black body um, thermal camera. Now, the second one I want to mention is the face covering detection camera. So this is, like, like, like we mentioned, the mask 
on camera, reminding people to uh, put on their mask before they're entering. So some of you have might, may have questions like, why would this be used in a restaurant setting? Well, a lot of restaurants here in Southern California, they're still requiring people to wear a mask upon entering into a restaurant. So you're only allowed to take your mask off when you're eating. So I've been through I've been through this a few times in the past um, few weeks. Um, so this is kind of the, the solution um, for that. Again, it works with our um, TSS Pro or Express software and also works with our um, new um, MVR, the MVR5216. So this is where they, it, it'll have an audio alert, you know, reminding person, someone to wear a face covering. Okay, now this is the um, customer flow controls um, entrance system. So this is um, what we have developed. So we were using people counting cameras to take a quick count of how many people are entering or, or leaving, you know, um, a, a store or a restaurant. So you, you can set a threshold about how many people you allow into a certain area. So right now, it's a lot of places, such as restaurants or casinos right now, or even hotels, they're only allowing, like Jennifer mentioned, 25 to 50% capacity. So you can set that threshold into a number, into this, um, into the NVR or the, ca the camera itself, and it'll display, you know, this um, customized um, kind of stop-go um, sign. So the NVR does have dual HDMI outputs, so you can actually, you know, put this on an external monitor, or uh, you can actually connect it to our digital signage product. So this is a new product we're coming in at the end of, um, we'll be introducing it at the end of the month, and we should get beginning stock of in July. So this is a 55 inch uh, digital signage. You can you know customize and connect to your soft your software and you know just customize the screen that is being outputted. That is for the um, customer flow control system. Now we'll jump into the thermal station. So some of the thermal station, you know, there's there's the current pain points are you know low efficiency um, without using this thermal station of the you know it's low efficiency of the thermometry gun so some supermarkets here they're having people stand outside doing manual temperature checks i mean you're coming in close contact with the person so it's kind of a, a, a pain point you know, our solution is our thermal station but it is a contactless automatic temperature monitoring it's accurate to 0.9 degrees fahrenheit and it is um, very fast another pain point of the manual side is you know, manual recording of people's data is um, kind of inefficient. Uh, they don't really, um, you know, write your, you know, name down and put, put down what your temperature is. So personal information is kind of difficult to collect. And with our solution, <clears throat> okay, with our solution, um, we can we can record the um, elevated temperatures. You know, all the information automatically into our NVR or our my software and you can see a person's uh, portrait with associated with that with that uh, temperature okay now here is the um, new temperature um, monitoring station it is a DHS uh, AS1 ASI 7213X T1 so it is a it does have a seven inch uh, touchscreen panel so this is where you do your set your configuration um, we do recommend this for indoor use only. It is not IP rated for any any type of moisture um, you know, protection. Um, the temp ambient temperature range is roughly 61 degrees to 8, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Like as I mentioned, the temperature accuracy is roughly um, 9 degrees Fahrenheit. You can monitor people's distance um, anywhere from one feet away to roughly six feet away, and it does have alarm prompts which is like these um, notification sounds if your temperature um, is elevated or if it has also has a mask mode that you can enable so if you're not wearing a mask and you step to it it'll tell you to wear a mask okay now these are the um model the accessories that are available so separately um there is a desktop mount um great for using it as a key a restaurant bar area, you know, and then we have a floor mount as well. 
So this floor mount is roughly almost um, five feet tall. So two accessories. So this is kind of an animation of how um, the thermal monitoring station works. So you have an entrance area. The person walks up to the station and it gets a temperature scan. If it's elevated, then you get the alarm notification. And then, you know, you can you know, take it into it and just further uh, matters if you need to. You know, some of the um, key features that I mentioned is contactless. You know, it's very high accurate accuracy. It's 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. It does have the temperature, height, elevated temperature alerts. Um, there is a, a software management side. We'll be using the DSS um, Express. It does have the uh, mask uh, detection mode and does have access control and time attendance with our uh, with our Dahua controllers and um, DSS Express software. As I mentioned, um, you know, it's contactless, it's highly accurate, so you, know, you don't need to have the person manually um, pulling a temperature gun to, you, to your face to take your temperature measurements. You know, um, the closer you are, you know, there is you know, the higher chance for cross-contamination with a second person. It is, like, as I mentioned, very um, highly accurate with a range of um, 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. As I mentioned, it does have the elevated temperature alert so the person steps up to it with a fever it will have a, a, a audio an audible um, sound a notification and then also go through um, alarm alerts through the nvr or the dss software or whatever you have set up but as as it stands you can't use it at, you can use it as a standalone um, unit uh, this is the mass detection so it is an option you can enable so if somebody's you know not wearing a mask, it'll tell them, it'll remind them to put on a mask. Again, now here's some of the operation modes um, built into this uh, new um, station. So there is a temperature only mode that only scans for temperature. It does not do any of the face detection. Now this is very quick. It's around roughly half a second just to, you know, person standing to in front of the station to get scanned. So that's the first mode. And the second mode is a temperature mode temperature only mode and uh, mass detection. So it kind of combines both of these modes. So if you have a high temperature and it'll remind you to wear a mask. Third mode, third mode is the face detection um, <clears throat> plus temperature mode. So it'll recognize your 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 face ID. So uh, you can set it up as a, a database into the system itself or on the NVR. And it'll do the face um, ID with along with the temperature temperature monitoring mode only. And then the last mode is just a mass detection only. So none, no temperature is being recorded, no face detection. It's just a mask only. So those are some of the modes. So if you really need a quick quick screening just for temperature, you should enable just the temperature only mode. Now some of our um, competitors are also launching similar products. Um, a lot of them are using different techniques such as thermal pile. Uh, at Daho, we are using thermal imaging <clears throat> technology. So some of the differences is the accuracy sensors. So the factory um, you know, just calibrates at once. So you won't you don't need to send your unit back for calibration. Um, compared to thermal pile which needs multiple calibration of temperature. Now what we, now with the thermal imaging it is higher temperature accuracy. Um, you, just, you do have a higher resolution of the thermal sensor, uh, 120 uh, by 90 as compared to thermal pile, which is uh, around 32 by 32. <clears throat> now with the scanning efficiency, you can see here that this is with the thermal, with the Dawa thermal imaging um, system, it's roughly half a second per person compared to thermal pile technology, which is um, two seconds, a full two seconds to scan a person. Differences are the mod distance range. So, with the modification, you know you, you can stand from one feet away to six feet away. But with the thermal pilot technology, you have to be really close, to around one one and a half feet away. With face detection, um, thermal imaging um, supports forehead uh, detection, so it'll target in the forehead area. But with thermal pilot technology, it kind of takes the highest temperature. Of whatever is in the, the the scene at the time, 
So if you're holding a cup of coffee, you know, it could be that could be taken as a <clears throat> high temperature. So you get it'll be a false, you know, false reading. Uh, face capacity with our thermal imaging uh, station, we can um, save up to 100,000 faces. Uh, thermal pile, roughly half of that. As I mentioned, um, <clears throat> the thermal, with the thermal imaging, you have a, a longer range of um, distance for measurement, so one to six feet away. And with thermal pile, the range is roughly, you know, your 0.5 meters or, point, or three to five inches away from the um, station itself. So you're really close to the station. So, you know, if you do have a virus or could be spreading your germs onto the unit, onto the um, measuring um, unit itself. So that's why our, um, there are benefits to the uh, thermal imaging with a longer uh, measurement distance range. A thermal imaging also has a longer, uh, actually a wider uh, temperature uh, measurement angle at 50 degrees compared to the um, thermal pile, which is less than 30 degrees. Uh, thermal imaging is a lot faster with temperature captures. And I like to mention, uh, look, basically forehead temperature. So you don't get that false reading with the thermal pod where you have, where it just measures the hottest item within the scene itself. Okay, now here's the, what's in the box content. You know, you get the thermal station and you get the thermal um, temperature sensor. And you have your um, cable accessories all included along with <clears throat> a, um, a wall plate if you need to um, mount to a wall. Now here's the pricing of the thermal station. So MSRP is $33.99.99. Uh, for the floor stand, it is uh, $399.99. And for the desktop stand, MSRP is $179.99. And some of the back end um, devices that work with these, with the thermal um, station is the 16 channel um, NVR. <clears throat> So it is, as I mentioned, 16 channels, um, 320 megabits of um, throughput. Uh, the temperature, is it's compatible with uh, temperature and um, access control. Um, it has um, 20 face databases along with um, holding 100,000 faces. And it does have an alarm output uh, to trigger to the external system when an elevated, is, elevated temperature is detected. Now here's just a couple of screenshots from our NVR. Um, showing you know the the capabilities of the high temperature, the, the mask, of, and the face identification as well. So this is with our uh, new 5216 NVR. That is the only model at this time that works with the thermal uh, products. And as for back end, we suggest using a DSS Express if you need a VMS software. So you get the um, real time display. You get <clears throat> real time pop ups for elevation. Um, temperatures. You see, um, you know, data statistics and report exports. Um, does support data history backtracking. Um, you can also um, do uh, batch imports with the uh, face images, and does have um, rich alarm links for events. So these are just some of the screen grabs um, from the TSS um, Express. And we're a lot. The last thing that works with the um, system is the new mobile app. Uh, this is a DMSS um, app. It supports real-time real dis real time display. It supports P2P and it will um, send you a notification if the, you know, if the temperature is not with the threshold it's shown here. So this is just a summary of the um, back-end products. You know, you have your DSS Express and you will need a DSS um, Express base license for this. Um, then the MVR and the mobile app, which is free. Okay, now some of the applications we'll be talking about with the face um, station, face, um, face temperature station is the <clears throat> restaurants, hospitality, and office buildings, and how we can help here. So, you know, so some background information, as Jennifer mentioned previously, you know, restaurants, air, um, bars reopening, you know, they are limiting the rooms and dense crowds. So there are guidelines from different um, states. Uh, every state is kind of different, but we do offer um, this um, 
temperature uh, detection product is pretty good for um, restaurants and bars at this time. So, <clears throat> like I mentioned, some of the features is it'll alert you when you know the high temperature is detected. So here is the topology of the thermal station, how it could be set up, you know, for your customer. So you could have one <clears throat> set up at a staff area for just for staff detection. And you can also have one set up for customer detection. So as I mentioned prior, you know, all this works with our um, NVR or DSS um, Express software. And, you know, the benefits, I'll just kind of repeat them again. It is contactless. You, know, you get the high accuracy and efficiency. So roughly, you know, 0.5 seconds um, for each person. <clears throat> it is um, portable, so you have the multiple stand options. Uh, you can easily search and do storage for the um, alarm and data and get instant uh, alerts when something happens or when the elevated temperature is detected. So some of the, you know, for restaurant scenarios, you know, here's an example of um, using the thermal station as a, um, for staff detection. You know, so staff will enter the area, you know, so many places right now are still requiring people to wear a mask. So they could, um, you can set up these scenarios where, you know, temperature, mask, and face um, identification is all passed before you can um, let an uh, employee into a working area. So just some criteria we can um, set up. Uh, there are multiple, like, multi-authentication modes um, with the face, face station. And here's an example of being set up as an entrance for a restaurant or a bar area that can detect you know, the temperature I mean, automatically. And again, you know, it works with the DMSS mobile app. Um, so you can have it set up for a manager, a restaurant, so we can get the notification. Um, so for example, for the entrance, you know, best solution would be to use this for with, you know, along with a floor stand. But, you know, there's some places, you know, they, have, they don't have a entrance, like, an area for that, so they just go straight to the cashier or bar area, and this will be great for you know using the desktop stand to do a quick scan. Um, so hospitality, you know, like ho all the hotels are reopening up too. Um, so when you you can set one up at the lobby entrance or in, at a restaurant entrance within the um, hotel. So again, you know, all the features we talked about: the temperature monitoring. Um, the mass detection, working with the um, with the mobile app or the mobile or the um, NVR or the DSS um, and Express uh, BMS. So this whole solution can be all incorporated into one. Here's an exa um, example of a, a reception desk at a hotel. So you know, the reception desk is the first line where customers enter. You can do a quick scan before the you know, proceed further with the temperature monitoring. And again, um, it does send out an alert automatically uh, right after it being scanned. So another off a scenario is for office building entrances. So a lot of offices are reopening right now, you know, so it'd be a good solution. Just a kind of a peace of mind for the employees that, you know, you are taking care of the employees and having a system set up. So you can stop the spread, you know, you can capture anyone who has a um, elevated um, temperature. And again, this works um, with the mass detection as well. So these are just some of the scenarios that you can incorporate the station with. You know, with the um, back end, here's the example of the DSS um, Express where you can have the real-time display and pop up alarms, you know, if you're if this is a management um, system or area. So the manager can just log into the open up the DSS Express and view all the records. And it does have real time display. And you can also go back and look through um, old recordings. This is another example of the uh, real time display. We're using the NVR. So the NVR um, does have a pop up alert as well. 
So, so, so if you don't need like a whole a VMS solution and you just, you just have a single store area, you know, um, an MVR um, can be useful in, in this setting as well. Here is the um, firmware that would be needed um, right now to use the latest firmware for the station and the NVR and the DMSS app. And we do have um, data sheets and flyers available uh, right now on our website, and we'll put these available on the dealer portal as well. Okay, Rebecca, that is all I have from my end.